Hi, I'm Stan Vanden. I will guide you to, through this poster. High capacity transport uh, allow access for vehicles larger than the ones allowed for general access, but only if the operator accepts that uh, the vehicles have strict technical standards and he promised to only drive on high capacity approved routes, no overloads, no speeding, and agreed to be monitored that he really followed the rules. In many high income countries, high capacity has generated considerable value since a few trucks for the same job means less road space, less energy and hence climate impact, less accidents since less trucks, better trucks and better driving, and after longer road life since uh, they have much more wheels than actually needed and above all lower cost. Assessments show improvements of 15 to 50 percent for individual vehicle swaps and 8 to up to 15 for all road freight. Much indicate however that uh, the benefits will be much larger in most developing countries, uh, particularly since uh, there will expect it to be a lack of capacity in the near future. OECD predicts that the demand for road freight in Africa will increase five times, in Asia three times until 2050, but road investments will not increase at the same rate. And the starting conditions are worse, less average size of the trucks, lower technical standards and often inefficient and corrupt law enforcement which have contributed to much lower regulatory compliances and considerably higher accident rates. Hence, we uh, propose to start forming a consortium at this very workshop to deploy high capacity transport with intelligent access in developing countries and in countries that grew very fast. We have observed five types of high capacity schemes, and all of these schemes uh, have required some compliance mechanisms and we have detected these seven types and five of the lower ones here are called intelligent access or smart access. These are combined with the access schemes in various ways. For example in South Africa performance-based standard vehicles can take more loads only if the operator is certified according to the RTMS scheme. And the results have showed considerable improvements, particularly regarding safety, which uh, support the hypothesis that the possibilities in growing countries are better than in Northern Europe. In Australia, when they are building the new subway under Sydney, they allow temporal permit to take more loads when moving earth and rocks if they apply the RIM uh, standard. The same will soon be demonstrated in Sweden. The telematics setup, first used in Australia 2003 and later in Estonia and now three pilots in Sweden, have much in common. It's a GPS positioning together with information, for example, of the loads for the axles. And they are through the box for fleet management via the seller mobile telephone, motor to a back end system with a trusted third party provider that will only release the data according to what is agreed on to the authorities with ID or without ID for sanctions or not for sanctions. Now is the perfect time to form this consortium because there are many post COVID green recovery investments plans being presented. And by combining that with high capacity transport, we will get more road capacity of two reasons. When they build the roads, we can get up to double amount the movement of vehicles for moving earth and gravel for the same cost. And when the roads are ready by using high capacity transport vehicles, they are monitored. We can have fewer vehicles doing the same job. That means less congestion for the same ton kilometer on the road. All this, of course, means less climate impact. In summary, we will give our proposed consortium a flying start. Thanks for listening.